What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It's Chu here from Choose to Explore where I teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So we just came back from an amazing trip to Iceland and this is the first time that we've been to Europe in years. And while we had an amazing time, we want to give you guys 10 things that we wish that we knew before we went to Iceland. So stay tuned, you don't want to miss this one. So the first thing that I want to talk about is Iceland is an amazing destination to do a stopover if you're from the Northeast and you want to head to Europe. And this is really because of its location and where it is. It's really in between the Atlantic Ocean between the East Coast of the United States and Europe. From New York, it was only about a five and a half hour flight and it's so worth it because the landscapes and everything that Iceland has to offer is so beautiful. But most importantly, it's a lot cheaper to fly to Iceland than it is to go directly to Europe. And airlines like Iceland Air and Play Airlines have free stopover programs where you could fly to Iceland, stay as long as you want, and fly to Europe, and it's all included, it's no extra cost. So for example, my wife and I, we flew to Iceland with Play Airlines, and our round trip ticket was 275 US dollars per person. Now, that is seeing the world and saving a dollar. So we just touched down in Iceland, and the first thing I wish I knew, the airport is actually about 45 to 50 minutes away from Reykjavik, and we are in Keflavik. So it's still not so far away, and most airports aren't directly in the city, but I wish I would've knew that before I came. And the airport is really modern, so we got here at around 5 in the morning, and all the stores and the restaurants inside are open, so you don't have to worry about things being closed, it's open pretty early. Also, duty free is open, so be sure to come here and stock up on things before you go. So you can actually take a bus into Reykjavik instead of taking a taxi, which could end up costing you about $100. So. More than $100. <laughs> so taking a bus is much cheaper. Um, I think I saw that a round trip ticket was around $28 per person with well, one of the bus companies, and you'll see that right here on the screen. Another good thing about this location being in Keflavik is actually it's so close to Blue Lagoon, which is one of the 25 wonders of the world. So I think Blue Lagoon is a perfect place to either start your trip or end your trip just based on the proximity of it to the airport. And Iceland actually is not that populated as a country and majority of the people live here in Reykjavik. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is when is the best time to come and visit Iceland? So we did a lot of research to try to figure out when we wanted to come. Now, if you guys have been checking out our channel, we usually go to a lot of tropical destinations. And let me just say, Iceland is not one of those. In actuality, Iceland is pretty cold year round. So I'm gonna talk about the different seasons so you can determine when is best for you to travel. Cause Iceland has beauty in both seasons, but it just depends on what you're looking for with your Icelandic experience. So the first one that I'm gonna talk about is the winter. So as you guys can comprehend, the winter is very cold. There usually is a ton of snow, ice, and unpredictable weather here in the winter. I mean, even in the summer, the weather is unpredictable, but especially in the winter. It has a lot less sunlight, and there are days where you have three, four, five hours of sunlight. This is definitely in the low season, so there are a lot less tourists in the winter time. Also, in the winter in Iceland, it's one of the best places in the world, especially, to see the northern lights. So if seeing the Northern Lights is important, going into the winter will give you your best chances to see it. Also, something that I like is the winter is a lot cheaper. And another thing to consider is driving in Iceland in the winter is very difficult because the roads can freeze over, it snows, there's not a lot of people out, and it gets dark really early. So you guys could decide if that's worth it or not. Now the complete opposite of the winter is the summer. So we were there in the end of April, and they actually said that that was summer. Now summer is the high season. If you don't want any tourists, it'll be really hard for you to go in the summer and not see any. So during the summer season, it's high season for a reason. And that's because mid-June, the sun never sets. It goes low and comes back up. So if you're somebody that needs your beauty sleep and you wanna go in the summer, bring some blackout curtains or an eye mask to block out it because It'll be really difficult for you to sleep when it's light out all hours of the day. It's actually will be really confusing. Also in the summertime, a lot of wildlife come out. So if you want to do any whale watching, if you want to go see any puffins, if you want to see some of the purple lupins, summertime is the best time to go see that. And even though it is summer, generally speaking, the highs are usually around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's really not that warm. And like I said, the weather is unpredictable, so you still can have 
rain, you still can have high winds, and it's really challenging to plan for weather in Iceland. Now personally, my favorite time to go and when we decided to go is the shoulder season. And that's in between winter and summer. So sometime March, April, even early May is the shoulder season. In the same regards, September, October will be the shoulder season as well. And you get the best of both worlds because you can still see the northern lights, you still may see some snow, you still can see some animals, you still can see a lot there in Iceland. So you really determine what you want to do and what you want to prioritize in your Iceland trip. When we were there in April, the sun set at 10 p.m. and it actually rose at like 5.30 a.m. So it was crazy because we were out all day and we got a good night's sleep, but I like having long days like that because you can see so much in a day. Like we did a glacier trek or an ice cave tour where we actually went inside of the cave in the first day of winter. So, so shoulder season and even in the summertime in Iceland, you still can do some of these winter activities. So the next thing you need to know is a rental car in Iceland equals flexibility and affordability. So we got this rental car for four days for $120. So it's gonna take us all over Iceland. So we'll see as much as we can. And by having a rental car, we can go at our own pace can see what we want to see, spend as much time as we want in a destination, not worry about crowds, not worry about tours, and do the things that we want to do here in Iceland. Also, at $30 for the day, it's a lot cheaper than taking buses, taxis, and any other sort of transportation. So that's a must here in Iceland if you feel comfortable driving. The next point that I'm sure you guys know if you did any research on Iceland is that Iceland is expensive. But even though it is expensive, there's still a lot of ways you can save. So here in Iceland, food is very expensive as well. But the way you get around that, or try to, is by grocery shopping. Yeah, so we're here at Bonus. You can't miss it, it has a great big pink pig on the outside. And we're gonna try to save some money by getting some food here. So the thing with this store is that it's not open 24 hours, but this one that we're at right here is literally right next to the airport. So it was a quick drive about less than 10 minutes from the airport. So highly recommend coming here as soon as you get here. So even though Bonus is the cheapest supermarket, it still is relatively expensive when you compare it to American prices, but it'll still save you some money to grocery shop. So when we say everything is expensive, we got the car, but you gotta put gas into it. So the cheapest place to get gas on Iceland is Costco. So our American Costco card works here. I just filled it up and a lot cheaper and saved me some money. So another way people end up wasting money in Iceland is by buying bottled water. So the water here comes straight from the glaciers and it's really refreshing, really safe to just drink like that. It has a lot of flavor. And in New York, I buy Icelandic water every day. Not every day, but I buy it often. So why would I come to Iceland and buy water? Like I'm <laughs> drinking it straight from the glacier here. So save your money and drink it straight from the tap. So there's a lot of different ways you can save on your accommodations. So usually the hotels are going to be really expensive, but you can get a hostel, which are a lot cheaper. You can get an Airbnb. And what is really popular in Iceland are these camper vans. Now the camper vans, they double as accommodations as well as getting you around. So you have the freedom and flexibility and you can spend the night there as well. Another thing that I'd recommend to save on accommodation is if you have a car or you plan to drive around, not staying directly in the downtown area in Reykjavik. So if you stay oh, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes outside of downtown and just drive in, you can get parking and you can save a lot in accommodation costs. And in our Icelandic travel guide, we give you guys a ton of accommodations, places to eat, experiences, and ways to save money in Iceland. So if you guys wanna save money in Iceland, please be sure to look at our Icelandic travel guide linked in our description. Also know that alcohol in Iceland is very expensive. So I would recommend if you are gonna get liquor to get it in duty free. The next thing that was really good about Iceland as an American is that everyone really speaks English. So even though we stayed mostly in the Southern coast, Everyone that we encountered spoke English. So we didn't have any language barrier, but the only thing that I would say is that the Icelandic language, reading it is very difficult, but it wasn't an issue because everybody spoke English. And this is why as an American, I would highly recommend Iceland as a great solo travel destination or somewhere that you can go and be safe. The next thing to know is that Iceland has some of the most beautiful landscapes I have ever seen in this world. And I've traveled to so many countries already. Iceland has so many beaches, ice caves, waterfalls, 
glaciers, unique animals, whale watching, hot springs, volcanoes, and even geysers. Also, I love the black sand beaches here. Just driving around, you get blown away by the landscapes. One tip that I would say about these landscapes is the weather here is unpredictable. So sometimes you may get a lot of rain, or it may be clear, but you're gonna get some rain again. So always bring waterproof gear and jackets. Also bring rain boots, boots. We have water resistant ski pants, and those will be linked in the description. The next thing that I'm gonna talk about Iceland is that you can use your card everywhere. So if you guys can see on my wall, every place that I go, I collect the bills. And in Iceland, I didn't even get a bill because I didn't need it. I couldn't even put a bill on my wall. Because everybody accepts cards, you don't even need to exchange your money or take out Icelandic currency. There's only one instance where we did actually need Icelandic currency, and, and this was when we were in Runalog. And this was an off the beaten path kind of private hot spring, and it was an owner there who only accepted cash. So we actually did have US dollars and we gave her the US dollars, but I would just recommend converting maybe $10, $20, just so that you can have it for instances like that or just take back home. But with the card, I highly recommend getting a credit card or a debit card that has no foreign transaction fees because using your card everywhere will definitely add up if you have to pay these foreign transaction fees. The next point that I'm gonna talk about Iceland is that even though it is expensive, a lot of the nature is free. And that's what I love. Now some things require a tour, such as doing whale watching because you don't have a boat and you don't know where the whales are, but a lot of the nature, such as seeing the waterfalls or going hiking, are just free. You literally just get out the car and you walk. Literally just driving on the highway, you can see so much beautiful nature that you don't even need to park and hike. And this was something that I know my wife likes because even though she loves going on these trips with me, hiking is not her best friend sometimes. <laughs> and this is especially good if you go in the winter because you may not want to get out and hike and then in the snow and then have to find where the car is and it'd be covered in snow or just really be in unsafe, unfamiliar terrains. And while I say that a lot of nature is free, there are some things that you have to pay either admission fees or parking fees. And I'm going to give you guys a tip to save money on some of these as well. So in places like the waterfall, Salandra Falls, I believe it's called, where you can go behind the waterfall, you have to pay a parking ticket. Here's a tip. If you see somebody leaving, ask them for their parking ticket. And from my experience, all of the tourists were very eager to give those away because those parking tickets are good for 24 hours and you're only gonna be there for an hour, two hours at most. The only thing that I'd recommend is if you see somebody at the payment kiosk and you have a parking ticket, don't let them pay for it. Give it to them and keep passing on. And this will help you save on those parking tickets as well. And my last tip about Iceland is the VAT tax refund. So as an American, you don't have to pay taxes on everything in Iceland. So if you do buy Icelandic products and you keep the receipts, right at the airport they have a VAT tax refund where you can get reimbursed for a lot of those things if you do buy them in Iceland. And there you guys have it, 10 things that I wish I knew before I went to Iceland as an American. Are you guys surprised by any of these? Let us know below in the comments. So thank you guys so much for checking out our channel. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned because we got a ton of dope content coming with Iceland. So you don't want to miss this. So we'll see you on the next one.